Hi, this is Bonnie Lynn Linky, and welcome to my studio, Stamping with Bonnie Lynn. Today I'm going to show you how I made this card right here. It says Beyond Grateful. It is from the Hello Harvest Stamp Bundle. It's a cling stamp set, which means a red rubber. And here I have my magnets in here. For this card, I used these two top dies for the pumpkin. I used this one for the stem, and I used that one, that one, and that one for the vines. So, okay. And then for the sentiment, I used the Charming Sentiment stamp set, which I had a moment ago. There we go. It's right here. This is a great stamp set. One of the million dollar producers, I think she hit either two or three million, two million in sales. And so every million dollars you get to design a stamp set. And this is the one she um, did. The sayings are wonderful. And then there's the framelits to go with it. And they fit nicely around the words so that you're just, as you saw on this card, you're just cutting out the um, words and not a lot of extra paper on it, which is kind of nice sometimes. I really like that. So with this stamp set, Charming Sentiments, you definitely want to buy it as a bundle and save that 10% and get the framelits with it. It's a great set. Many, many years of good usage ahead of it with that one. And also, let's see, the embossing folders I used, I used two of them for this one. Um, this back piece of paper right here is embossed. It's very vanilla, and it is the Leaf Fall 3D embossing folder. Now, if you look at this, the leaves go down at an angle right here and also up here, which I really like that. So this top corner, the top right corner, does not have any embossing on the very vanilla. And then I embossed after I stamped and cut out the leaves. I put them through in an embossing folder. And this one is the Time Worn Type one from, um, it's from last year's holiday catalog, but I believe it is still active in the annual catalog. And it's a, it's a really good set, but it just gives the, um, a textural element to my leaves, which I enjoy having. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna just set this one up out of the way. There we go, and bring in my supplies right here. Now I have already stamped my leaves and did cut everything out. So I'm gonna start off here by folding my card base in half. And here's my mountain right here. I always fold with it to the inside. And just line that up. And take your bone folder and give it a good edge. And then you want to take your embossed piece and you want to put it on. But, you know, make sure you cut it right. It may be a tiny big bit long but that's okay it's not that much and so I I'm, apologize I thought I already had tape on this but I don't so I'll go ahead and put my tape on and my preference is the tear and tape but if you like liquid glue that will work so will the stamp and seal This is just the way I learned, and so it's the way I do it. Fall's my favorite time of year. The weather's just perfect. Right now, it is supposed to be like 103 out here today. I live in Idaho. Okay, and I'm gonna take this pick. Um, the take your pick is wonderful too, to take the end off of it. This is an old one from Stampin' Up and it just happens to still be my favorite. So it's hard to give it up. 
but it just gets the um, end of the tape separated, the paper, to make it easier to put it down. Okay. And then now we want to take our designer series paper, and this is the Gingham Cottage designer series paper. All the measurements are on my webpage. It's three and a half by four and three quarters inch, and we're just gonna center it on top of this. And this is the back side, which would have looked pretty too, but it's all white, and I want it, um, I chose, chose to use very vanilla because it was more fall feeling than what the white was to me. So we'll go ahead and put this down. See, I put down the two sides and then I do them one at a time and then I take the last two pieces off at the same time to put this down. Okay, and then next will come the frame. And I cut this out with the Fabulous Frames uh, framelets or die cuts. And my piece of, this is the brush copper, I believe. Um, either the copper or the bronze brush one will be fine. And this piece is four by five and a quarter. And I just centered it on it. Now, it did leave about an eighth of an inch on each side. If you want a bigger frame left over, you can always cut it five and a half by four and a quarter. And that would probably give you an inch on each side of what's left over if you center it. And then you can use that as a frame if you ever want it to. But I like cutting my um, designer series paper and foil in four inch strips. That way it seems to go further. Okay, now what I'm using on here are the foam, is foam adhesive. And Stampin' Up does have the very thin, um, taller foam adhesive strips, which are great for if you're doing a shaker card. These are it right here. But these stand a little bit higher than what I want it. So I um, have this foam tape here. It is off of Amazon. It is a quarter of an inch wide and it fits perfect in these in this frame i do cut it i don't even try to tear it now the pair of scissors i'm using is from tonic studios and they're great for adhesives and this is all i use these for because the adhesives it will stick but not anything like what it seems to stick to every other pair of scissors for me. And it um, cleans up with just a little bit of undo on the blades. Um, all the stickiness comes off. Okay, and I did take the tape off the one in, and I'm going to put it on here just so that it is centered and you don't see any of the edges on the outside of the gingham cottage. There we go. And this is Crush Curry, the color on this gingham cottage paper. And that really is a nice pack of paper. You get lots of paper in it. It will last a while, but so many uses for it. It would look good on um, some of your holiday cards and birthday cards. Just so many choices for that. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to, this is our pumpkin pieces, and if you look real closely, you might be able to see there's some indention, some embossing that is built into the die, which is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do now is I just want to give it some dimension. So I'm going to take my pumpkin pie ink pad, and I have a sponge dab dauber, and I'm just going to ink the edges of all the pieces. I probably don't really, yes, I do need to do that. So much the bottom or the top because you really don't see them by the time we're all done. But I don't want to take that chance, so I just do all the edges. There we go, I like that. Just add some dimension to it. 
Now go and do this piece. And this is the end of July. So celebration is still going on through the end of August. With any $50 merchandise order, you get to pick something free from the celebration items. And the only thing that I'm aware of that is sold out presently is the um, soft sea foam note cards and envelopes. Okay, there we go. So this is going to go like so. So we want to put this together. And I'm going to put it together with just a couple glue dots because I want it to not, I want it to be able to kind of raise up some and just have some more dimension to it. But I don't want to use dimensionals because that will raise it up too much. So put one glue dot up there. And I'm going to put one down here, just like so. And then I'm going to just put this in the middle. Like that. Okay. And then I'm going to take my tear and tape, or you can use seal for this. And I'm going to put a piece of tape on this side. And then one on this side. And the reason why I don't want to use glue on this is because I want to be able to stick my stem down and through there. And if I glue it, I won't be able to do that. And just put this down at the bottom in the middle. Okay. And now for the stem, if you've ever noticed pumpkin stems, they have, um, they're more kind of a brownish color than a tan color than um, green, but I didn't want a brown one. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my sponge dauber, dauber, which has some soft suede ink on it, and I'm just putting a little bit on there just to make it more realistic. And I'm gonna take a glue dot for this one, and I'm gonna put it more up high than down low. Stick it to my finger too. Okay, and I'm just gonna put the stem up. Skinny in goes up. There we go. And now I want to take my vines. Now, before I cut out my vines, I put the adhesive sheet on the back of my um, old olive cardstock. And that way, I don't have to be concerned about getting glue on this. And I'm just going to put this one up here like so. And all you do is take that back piece of paper off of there. and stick it down. It's wonderful. Now for those of you that have thinner nails than what I do, you can just also pick this off with your fingernails. There we go. And See, we'll just put that one so it's going like that too. Okay, and I was supposed to put this leaf down before I put this up. So I'm going to just raise that a little bit. And I need to put a piece of, just a small piece of tape on the back. That's even too big. Okay. You want to put your leaf in first to make sure it fits. And you also want it to go over top the vine, not 
you want the leaf underneath the vine, like so. So there we go. Now put tape on the other two leaves. And you can, um, if you want to use dimensionals, if you want to use glue dots on these, whatever you prefer. There's no right or wrong way. I want to do the yellow one first, so crush curry first. Just lay that down there and have that one stick up there like so. And then I'm going to get a couple dimensionals to put on my saying. Just like this. And I'm going to put it a little bit over to the left side. Okay, now we need a bow for the front. And to do that, I used the Baker's Twine Essential Pack. And you get gray granite, um, that looks like Sahara sand, black, white, and creme cake. And I have this cool little bow maker. my original Stamping Up demonstrator before I became one. Her husband made these for her and she gave me one. So I took my twine and wrapped it around twice and I'm just gonna tie a knot in it. And all this is, is a piece of two by four with some holes cut it, drilled into it and a two pieces of dowel. And you'll notice that mine had broken off one time. Whoops, I should have left this a little bit longer. Um, try this again. Mine had broken off at one time. That's why this side is a little bit shorter. I'm all butterfingers today. There we go. Maybe I'll get it yet. All right. And it's just the right length and it's shredding a little bit and that's okay. I'm just gonna grab me a glue dot here and pick it up. And I'm just gonna place it right there. I think I might cut that ends off some. All right. There, I like that. Now we want to, on the back, this is a limited edition stamp set. You got all different types of things. I think I'm going to put the limited edition stamp on the back. So grab a clear block, I'll grab my soft suede ink pad, and this way the person who receives this card will know they're special. Isn't that cute? Limited edition, three times around the circle. And it does have the copyright Stampin' Up! signal on there because, uh, symbol on there, because if you do sell your cards, we are required through their angel policy to have the Stampin' Up! copyright mark on there. Now we need to do the inside and we need to do the envelope. So what we're gonna do for the inside, we're gonna grab the soft suede again. And let me see, where's the stamp set? Here it is. I think we will use You Are Such a Blessing. So I'll grab that stamp set, or stamp, my clear block. Get it so I'm not putting it upside down when I stamp it. Huh. 
That's pretty straight for me. <laughs> All right, and I'll set that aside. Now we're gonna get our Crush Curry ink. And you can do some leaves down in the bottom if you want to. I just wanna do this little sunflower though and the Crush Curry. I'm gonna put one up there. like so and then do the same on the envelope put three of them down in this corner and there we go turn that over and put some tape on it now this piece is three and three quarters by five inches because when I did my first card, I'll show you, it just looks kind of like it's missing something. And this one I said, oh, beyond grateful, simply thankful for the good things. This is actually a stamp from a retired set um, from the country home stamp bundle. I don't have many fall sets, so I don't tend to get rid of my fall sets. And um, it's nice to be able to go back and use them. Actually, I keep a lot of my stamp sets. I figure someday I won't be a demonstrator and I'll go back and make lots of cards with, um, with these sets that I don't get to make enough with at the time. So I decided that this needed to be framed on a piece of Crush Curry cardstock. And that's what we're gonna do. There we go. Okay, if you guys don't have a demonstrator, I would love it if you would um, use me as your demonstrator. You can find my store on my website at stampingwithbonnielynn.com. And um, if you like this video, please mark that you like it. You can also follow me on Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And one of these days when I get enough subscribers on YouTube, I'll start doing a, an occasional live instead of recording it ahead of time. Then I can read your comments and um, answer your questions at the time. Doesn't that look so much better with that Crush Curry on there? I think it does with having such a light colored background. But this is the very vanilla thick cardstock I used for my card base, and then just the regular vanilla cardstock for the um, panel and for the leaves and the saying. And there we go. We have the Hello Harvest stamp bundle that created this beautiful card, Beyond Grateful. And I am beyond grateful for all of you for joining me today and on all my videos. And I am very grateful for those of you who use me as your demonstrator. Thank you, I hope you enjoyed this card and this video, and I will see you next time on Stamping with Bonnie Lynn. Bye.